Hey everybody, welcome back. Third and final video in our Home Assistant deployment series for our fully supported options. So quick recap, option number one is your Raspberry Pi with Home Assistant OS. Awesome, easy, flash that, run it, you're off and running. Great. Option two, which is my preferred method, is the supervised option. So that's Debian 12 running on a variety of different hardware options. And that gives you much the same experience as the Home Assistant OS, but you manage the operating system. Great, I like that. Third option, which is very easy to deploy as well, but requires by far the most of you and a lot of tinkering to get anywhere near feature parity with Home Assistant OS or the supervised install on your own hardware. Why is this so different? Let's go back and take one more look at the matrix here of our install options. First column, HAOS. This is your Raspberry Pi or similar supported hardware. My personal option is the supervised option, that's column four. And the third one is the second column here, the container option. So you can take a look here at you know what's supported and what's not supported within that. And we can see with the container edition, we're missing add-ons. That's a really key and critical one. So as we consider these options, again, I don't really recommend the container option for general consumption. I think of Home Assistant as more of like an appliance within your home. Kind of like your like alarm panel or you know your electronics cabinet it's just part of your home so i don't really like putting it like nestled in and co-mingled with my other container stuff uh, but i do like to tinker and i do love containers so this deployment is very quick and easy but it has some prerequisites on you the operator so you must be comfortable running docker containers so you need to know how to use docker compose these are things i'm not going to cover in this video i am going to cover on this channel generally but i'm going to make some assumptions that you're already pretty good with containers or at least comfortable enough to manage and deploy a docker compose file so if that's you Let's check this out because I do want to show you how quick and easy it is to do this. Let's jump into my system. And this is a Rock 4, very similar to what we just deployed supervised on. This is a dedicated Docker host. Decide how you like to organize your file structure for your containers. I like to do like a compose files folder for everything and then a folder per container deployment. I have one called Home Assistant. And within that, I've got a docker-compose YAML file. Again, don't be scrambling to try to catch this uh, configuration file in the video itself. Click the link below that goes to my website where you can just copy and paste this, make some modifications for your environment. But let's step through this. I have a few extra things in here, which are kind of teasers for where we're gonna go with this in the near future. So you'll see I have got a couple of areas that are commented out. This is kind of where it differs from the Home Assistant deploy that you can find. So you'll notice I have the networks section grayed out. We're not defining a network and we're not defining any ports. So in this particular case, the raw deploy is going to use the network mode host. This lets the container take direct advantage of that the network adapters that are on your host. The disadvantages here is it makes it a little harder to talk to other containers that might be on that host as well. But if, if you're running this dedicated on here and you're just gonna be running home assistant containers, you're gonna be okay. Now, you'll see some areas down below where we have labels. These labels we're gonna use later on when we get into our traffic proxy. If you're not familiar with traffic, this is a built for containerization web proxy. So this lets you throw SSL certificates in front of all of your services with fully qualified names. So you're not trying to remember IP addresses or have weird namespaces to find things. Real SSL certs, these aren't self-signed certificates or anything like that. And what's really amazing about traffic is since it is built for the containerized world, you can configure it from other containers by passing it these labels. So if you look at these labels carefully, these tell the traffic service what to do and what to call these different connectors, where to find this service, what to name it, and things like that. Now I'm leaving this in here and I'm not bothering to comment it out. So if you don't have traffic running in your environment, this doesn't do anything bad or anything like that, that the labels present themselves out there, but if nothing's looking for them, they're just there. They don't do anything, but they'll become relevant later on. Now, if we uncomment the networks up at the top and the networks within the actual service and then the ports, then we're going to be telling it to actually use this defined network and these exposed ports so that you can get to home assistant. Now, why don't we just do that off the bat? Home Assistant does a lot of discovery out there on your network. So 
if it doesn't have more direct access to that adapter, it's not going to do a very good job of identifying devices that are broadcasting on your network and configure. You can still do the configuration, but rather than them kind of showing up and saying, hey, we found this new device on your network. Do you want to configure it? You're going to have to give it the IP address or host name that it can find it at and do a more manual configuration. Two different ways of approaching it, pros and cons on either side. So if we pop out of there and then we go ahead and just deploy this, we'll use our standard Docker dash compose up dash D, it'll go ahead and deploy that. Hey, it threw a warning because uh, I'm referencing a variable in there that doesn't exist because I didn't bother to put in the .env file. So uh, for my my seasoned Docker friends out there, uh, you, you know exactly what uh, what's missing there, but you also know this is benign because we already said we're not pushing this to the traffic web proxy for this particular deploy. Next thing we should do since we have it up and running is let's take a look at its running logs. So that's your docker logs F for follow and then the name of the container, home assistant. And we'll see just the basic log stream that's coming out of that container. And unless you see anything scary in here that looks like it fell over and it's not working, uh, it should be up and running. So if we were to open up a browser and point it at the IP address of your Docker host here and port 8123, you'll see the very familiar welcome message here from Home Assistant. One thing you might be noticing is missing from here is you don't have the option to restore from a backup like you did. And again, that's another limitation of the containerized options here. If you're coming from a supervised version of Home Assistant, you're gonna have a hard time getting this to restore in here because it's gonna be assuming you've got all these add-ons which are containers on the side that you are now manually managing because you chose to use the container version of Home Assistant. So with that all done, hey, that was a really quick and easy way to deploy Home Assistant as a standard container, a Docker container. The reason I wanted to show you this is this is the third supported option you can do for deploying Home Assistant. And there are use cases for this. I like to tinker with containers a lot. So even though I don't think this is the way to go, I still have a lot of interest in this and how it interacts. And I just like to learn these types of things. I wanna share with you how you can overcome some of the challenges of not having add-ons in this type of deployment. It's not really gonna get most people to where they wanna be with their home assistant deployment, but it's an interesting journey and you're gonna learn a lot about containers along the way. And that's the important thing. Thanks for joining me today. I hope this was helpful for you. Just a quick teaser on how to do a containerized deployment of Home Assistant. We're going to tinker with this a little bit. And this is the end of this three-part series. So from here, we're going to move into more kind of classic containerized things, but they're all going to tie back into Home Assistant. So we're off to a good start now. You've chosen the way that you want to deploy your Home Assistant. I hope you found the path that's best suited for you. We're going to continue to learn more about containers, and you're going to bring that all into the fold here. I hope you found this helpful. Please let me know in the comments what else you'd like to see kind of around Home Assistant. It's an enormous ecosystem. System. So we're going to cover a lot of ground. I want to cover the things that you guys want to see. Let me know what areas you're struggling with, what we should touch on first. And that can also just bleed into Docker and containers more generally. I really hope you found this helpful. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you see the next one coming in and I'll see you real soon.